Hi everyone, I'm Michael Gordon. This week we had a few interesting updates on the home building sector, and I'd like to share a few of the highlights from that. Firstly, building consents still running at very high levels. While the number for April was down by 8%, they, those monthly numbers tend to be pretty jumpy, and it did follow a 6% rise in the previous month. So if we look back over the last 12 months, building consents are still running at record high levels of over 50,000. So there's plenty of work in the pipeline. The challenge is about turning those consents into finished homes. Stats New Zealand has produced some new indicators about building timeframes, which really help to shed some light on that. Firstly, they estimate that almost 35,000 homes were completed in the last year, but that pace has actually been slowing in the last year. And that also shows up in terms of the average time to completion, even by the end of 2020, that had already pushed out to almost a year and a half on average. And since then, we've heard more about issues with not just the cost, but the availability of some key building materials, which will have further added to delays. On the plus side, considering that typical time to build, it still looks like the vast majority of consents lead to a completed home. And that makes sense. There's already a lot of work just to get to that consenting stage. So by that point, people are generally pretty well committed to the project. Another positive is that around a third of completed homes now are townhouses or apartments or other kinds of units. And that share is double what it was five years ago. Now that change in the mix is crucial to addressing the housing shortage that New Zealand had built up in years past. Building more homes in the places that people want to live inevitably means higher density than what we've done in the past. Talk to you next week.